Hello everybody, getting ready to start uh, lesson 1.1, Lines and Planes and Pre-Calculus Math today. Um, welcome aboard. If you need note-taking guides or, or solution PowerPoints, contact me here at this email. Or if you need uh, other prep for this course, like uh, pre-algebra lessons, Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 lessons, or geometry lessons, email me here and I can get you a... Um, a, uh, a catalog of courses that will uh, reinforce your math skills so you can take pre-calculus math. 1.1 lines in the plane. We're going to cover these topics here. Part 1. There's 40 points of lecture in this 1.1 um, part 1. And there's 10 points here of note taking. So I have your note taking guides out. Finding slopes of lines, uh, writing linear equations, given points on lines and their slopes, using slope-intercept forms of linear equations to sketch lines, and then using slope to identify parallel and perpendicular lines. So again, 10 points here. Contact me if you're not taking guides. Teachers, here's our bell work for the day. Uh, determine whether the expression is polynomial. If it is, write the polynomial in standard form. So students, give your students about four minutes to do this. Okay, welcome back for solutions for today's bell work. And for this one up here, now the term x to the negative one power, this one here equals this, one over x, which causes the expression not to be a polynomial. This one is, and then in standard form, you have uh, decreasing of, uh, exponents here. This is x to the fourth, x uh, cubed, x squared. So those decrease moving from left to right. And this is standard form here, negative 2x to the fourth minus x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2. That would be standard. Okay, into our lesson today, into your notebook students, Introduction to Library of Parent Functions. In this chapter, you'll be introduced to the concept of a function. As you proceed through this course, you'll see that functions play a primary role in modeling real-life situations. So page one in your notebook, here is a, an example here of a list of algebraic functions uh, formed by applying algebraic operations to the linear function form f of x equals x. And then this gives you uh, the sections that these types of functions are in linear, quadratic, cubic, rational, root. And then transcendentals, these functions cannot be formed from the linear function by using algebraic uh, operations. We go get into exponentials, logarithmic, and trigonometric here. Trigonometric, and these are the functions here. Inverse, tri uh, trigonometric, oof. Inverse trigonometric, arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tan down here. And then this will be the sections that we do those in. <clears throat> And then non-elementary functions, some useful non-elementary functions, include the following absolute value function, then the greatest integer uh, function here. Okay, let's start with slope of the line. This goes in your notebook. In this section, you'll study lines near equations. The slope of a non-vertical line represents the number of units the line rises or falls vertically for each unit of horizontal change from left to right. That's just a fancy way of saying slope is rise over run is basically what slope is. And then here's an example here of rise over run. So it'll be your difference of your y over the difference of your x coordinates. That is slope. And then here's a pretty good diagram here. Jot that in your notebook. So when I do notebook checks, I can see that you have slide number four, lesson 1.1, jotted down in your notebook. And make this quick sketch. <clears throat> As you move from left to right along this line, a change of 
y2 minus y1 units in a vertical corresponds to a change of x2 minus x1 units in the horizontal direction. That is y2 minus y1 is equals change in y and x2 minus x1 equals change in x. Slope of the line is given by the ratio of these two changes. The definition of slope of the line is the slope m of non-vertical line through x1, y1 and x2, y2 is here is your formula for finding slope change in y over change in x where x1 cannot equal x2. If this is zero then you have a vertical line. When this formula for slope is used, the order of subtraction is important. Given two points on the line, you are free to label either one of them as x1, y1, and the other as x2, y2. Once you've done this, however, you must form the numerator and denominator using the same order of subtraction, like this here. y2 and x2, they line up, and then y1, x1, they line up. So you're subtracting this way from y x2 to x1, etc. That would be correct. y1, x1, and then y minus y2, x2. That would be correct too. It doesn't matter. You can put y1, x1 up front or y2, x2 up front. This would be incorrect when you mix up here. You got y2 minus y1, then you got your x1. These don't line up here. These have to be the same uh, sub subtext here for for you to have a correct slope calculation <clears throat> okay example one finding the slope of a line find the slope of a line passing through each pair of points we have two points there so we're going to plug in from up here from our two points one one minus zero so we go one minus zero then three minus a negative two and we get 1 over 5. So this would be the slope here between these two points. Difference in y values and then your difference in x values. Then here's the actual graph here. And it shows you it's a pretty flat slope. And it is positive, but it's 1 over 5 would be your slope. <clears throat> and then b would be negative 1, 2, and then 2, 2. So we plug that into our slope formula. 2 minus 2, 2 minus 2, then 2 minus the negative 1. We get 0 over 3, so it's a flat line here. It has a 0 slope, so it's a horizontal line. And then 0, 4, and 1, negative 1. So again, plugging that in, uh, negative 1 minus 4, then 1 minus 0. So we get negative 5 over 1. So we have a steep slope here, negative 5, with our two points plotted. And then that would be the uh, actual graph of these two points here. Okay, let's get into a guided practice. Find the slope of the line passing through these two points. Then draw the uh, draw the graph. So we got negative six, negative one. Down here, since this is your independent practice, you do this. I'll do this one to model for you what it should look like. Slope is undefined. Why is that? because it's a vertical line. Negative six, four, and negative six, negative one. When you have a vertical line like this, your x coordinates, which are negative six, negative six, when you subtract in, you get a zero in the denominator, so it's undefined. But nevertheless, and it's not a function either, so, but this is the plot of these two points here. Okay, page 10, point slope form of equation of the line point slope form of line pass through the point x1, y1, and as the slope of m is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So this is a different kind of a formation here. Find the equation of the line. Let's get into an example here. Find the equation of the line passes through point 1, negative 2, and has a slope of 3. So we're going to use this style here, style here, uh, point slope form y minus y1. We know what y1, this is y1. And then x we don't know yet, but um, uh, x1 will be this one here. And we have m. We have m, so we just plug in our values. y minus the negative 2 equals 3 times x minus 1. And c. And then we just simplify here. y plus 2 equals 3x minus 3. 
we combine like forms and then we get y equals 3x minus 5 would be the equation of this line here using point slope formation. <clears throat> then here's the actual line here to throw that in. We got a slope here of 3, so it's pretty fairly steep line here. <clears throat> okay, getting into our guided practice now. Uh, uh, find an equation on the line that passes through the given point. Here's our given point. It has the indicated slope. Here's our given slope, m equals 3. Sketch the line by hand using graphing utility to verify your sketch if possible. So we're going to do this one. Students, this is you. You do this one. So uh, to do this one here, number 25. Since m equals 3 and we have our point here, 0, negative 2, we're going to use point slope form here, point slope. So I just plug in uh, 2 be y minus uh, y1 or y1 this is negative 2 the negative of a negative will be 2 and then 3 is our slope and then x minus 0 so we just combine like terms now and we get y equals 3x minus 2 and uh, well yeah I mean we why put it in this form here uh, there's no reason to to go there so here is the equation of our line and then the graph here is right here we have a slope here of three we have a y-intercept of negative two which is down here mm -hmm. so that would be the graph and then here would be the equation of this line here with this point and then this slope so do the same down here students Okay, notebook, page 13. This point slope form can be used to find an equation of a non vertical line passing through two points, x1, y1, x2, y2. So, first find the slope of the line, then use point slope form to obtain the equation. So, y1 minus y, y minus y1 equals, and then here is our slope formula that's being put out front of our x1, x minus x1. Uh, situation here so that is another way this is sometimes called the two-point form of the equation of y because um, well we, we got to have y1 y2 and then x1 x2 to find our slope so we can do it that way so linear model for profits prediction uh, research emotions net profits were this number in 2007 were this number write a linear equation giving the net profits y in terms of the year x and use the equation to predict the net profits for 2008 so we're going to write a linear equation giving the net profits so we have those in terms of the year so let x equals zero which represents 2000. So uh, when x equals 0, so that would be down here, I guess, right here. 2006 would be right here. So this would be 2000. And then 6, uh, 631.6. And then 7 would be uh, 1293.9 be two points on the line representing that profit so here's our profit line here here's our equation here for profits so the fine slope we're going to we got rise over run so we got seven minus six and we're going to subtract this amount from uh, rather this amount from this amount and then this gives us our slope here of 662.3 so that goes in up here that's our slope and then minus this number here um, that must be our y-intercept <clears throat> I don't know where we're getting that 3342.2 that must be our y-intercept By the point slope form, the equation of the line is as follows here. Y minus 631.6 equals 
662.3 times x minus 6. So uh, y, when we multiply it through and we do our combining of like terms, we move this over here, 662 by these two um, amounts here times negative that number. And then we get our 662.3x minus 3342.2. When x equals 0, uh, <clears throat> we have a negative amount here is, is what we have here. So we start in debt. We start production in debt is what that would mean. Now, using this equation, you can predict the net uh, the profits in 2008 by plugging in 8 up here. So when we do that, we have um, $1,956.2 million in profit. Whoopee. So, yeah, quite good, actually. Yeah, I'd say so. So... 1968.8 million would be 1.9 billion dollars which is not a bad paycheck okay let's get into our guided practice here the median player salary for New York Yankees was 1.6 in 2001 5.2 in 2009. Write a linear equation giving the median salary y in terms of the year x so we're going to do that in class, and then students, this is yours. Then use the equation to predict the median salary in 2017. Okay, so here's our guided practice here today. The median player salary for the New York Yankees was 1.6 million in 2001 and 5.2 million in 2009. Write a linear equation giving the median salary y in terms of the year x <clears throat> so do that we let x equals 1 and that's 2001 is year 1 and that's 1.6 million dollars in 2001 and then 5.2 million for year number 9 2009 and then we figure our slope here between these two points so we have difference in y over difference of x so we have uh, 1.6 uh, subtracting 5.2 and then we get a number there and then 1 minus 9 be negative 8 and then we divide negative 8 into the difference of our y and we get 0.45 here this is our m and then x minus 1 and then that will when we simplify and combine like terms we get y equals 0.45x plus 1.15 we bring this over here <clears throat> and then to predict the median salary guess what students I'm gonna let you do that on your own and that is your lesson today in pre-calculus uh, email me here for questions or materials for note taking guys solution powerpoints for the homework or for quizzes and testing thank you very much